Hey guys, welcome back. In my last mailbag video I mentioned that I tried to fix this electric screwdriver and I wasn't successful. And I was also not sure whether or not to release the footage. And in this video a viewer of mine called Be of Nut asked me to release the footage. The problem is at that point I already deleted it because one I thought it wasn't really uh, interesting, two I was going to make a video to actually fix it this time working and three I ran into some storage issues. So in this video this is for my viewer and everyone who tries to fix one of these I will show you what I did and why it didn't work. Now let's take a look inside. I already removed all the screws I just have to remove this uh, spring over here. Now we can disassemble everything. So in the front we have the gear now this thing uh, is still in good shape, works totally fine. We have a locking mechanism, so you can use it as a normal screwdriver or electric screwdriver. Then we have this part over here, this part of the gear. It completely disassembles itself if you try to get it away. Some sort of plastic in between. And here's everything inside. Oh yeah, and this is the switch. When everything is assembled, like this, you have three modes. In the middle you have a mode where it does nothing. If you turn it to the right it uh, goes uh, was it clockwise, yeah, and if you have it to the left it goes counterclockwise. And this just works by sliding this white thing over here which just changes the polarity of the motor. If it's in this position you see under here we have the pin going to this side and over here this metal spring which gets pressed down and acts as a switch. And if we turn it the other direction, the lower pin goes to this terminal and the upper pin to the right and this acts as a switch. That's a really genius way to switch a motor and that's it. That's the motor. It's a 2.4 volt motor and we yeah, have nothing special about it, just a 2.4 volt motor. And when I first opened it, there was just the motor inside and a huge cell with one diode and a DC jack over here. This is the old charging port. So the charger would go in here, would charge the big cell. The diode is just a crude reverse polarity protection and the motor would be driven directly from this weird, big, chunky, heavy cell that also has a voltage of 2.4 volts. So what I did then was I installed one of these 18650 cells in here. Then I used one of these uh, BMS and charging circuits. This one is good for 2 amp continuous up to 3 amp maximum load. Everything above 3 amp gets cut out. So typically you use it 2 amps but an electric screwdriver it's not a big deal if you use it for up to 3 amps for a short time. So this one got installed in here. So we have this opening over here uh, with silicone on the underneath to hold it in place. And this cutout is for a tactile switch to switch the battery on and off um, and make connection to the back converter that is needed. Because a, an 18650 cell has a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts and a nominal voltage of 3.5 volts. Uh, 3.7 and it can go all the way down to 3.5, 3.3 and depending on the cell even maybe as low as 2.7 volts. To protect the cell from under discharge I have this BMS circuit and this buck converter converts the 4.2, 3.7 volts down to the 2.4 volts for the motor and this circuit is good for 3M continuous. And before I tr actually tried to use all of these, I made sure that the motor didn't use more than 3 amps. And that's where the problem started. So let me show you what I did. So I'm currently recording my bench power supply with an action camera. That's also why it looks uh, fish eye. But that's the only way I can show you what I'm doing here and the power supply at the same time. And for some reason the screen turned off. Oh no, it's still working. So I will now change the voltage to 2.4 volts. That's a bit difficult to do. 2.4 volts. 
and we limit the current to the mentioned 3 amps. Now this is the motor in its uh, turn-off state and if I turn it on, take a look at the current. Now again we turn it off and back on and we have 1.97 amps turn on current. So this is really typical for motors, they can have a relatively huge turn on current. But once they settle in, everything's fine. And 2 amps is well within what these modules are capable of. So no problem there. And I thought, well, when I turn it on and I get the screwdriver in place, I turn it on, uh, because the gear would increase the motor strength, it would not be a problem and I assume that it would not use more than 3 amps at any point. But that was a big mistake, because now let's install the motor gear and see what happens with the current. And this is what I did after it did not work, instead of doing it beforehand. Now let's install it, and this is a bit tricky. Okay, let's get it in. Now I will hold it in place and let's see what happens to the current. Oh, that's difficult. And suddenly we hit the current limit. For one, it's really loud, but that's a really old screwdriver. And you saw that it immediately hit the current limit and then it got back down to 2.4 amps and when I press a bit harder on the gear it again jumped up to 3 amps. Now let's disengage the current limit and go all the way up to 20 amps. And by the way I uh, upgraded my bench power supply, it now uses a DPS uh, 5020. Now if I turn it on jumps to 2.61 amps. Turn it off and it back on. 2.81, 2 2.89, 1 1.98. So it's not really stable but it's in the 2 amp range. But now let's turn it on and I will apply some force. Let's take a look at the current. You see, it jumped to 5 amps and that was only what I could apply with my bare hands. And when I tried this with a, an actual screw, I hold it like this and try to screw in a screw into wood, it would jump up up to 8 amps. And that's the big problem. None of these modules over here can deliver 8 amps, not even for a short time. With these, any load, not even a screw that is really screwed in or a, a loose screw can barely be moved with the 3 amp limit. So what I did, I bought some BMSs that were uh, capable of doing up to 8 amps, but I'm still having the problem that I don't have any buck converter to regulate the 4.2 volts down to a voltage this motor can use. And I'm not really sure if I can apply this voltage right away. I don't want to damage the motor. So in the end, there are two things that I can do and you might also can do, and that is either to replace the motor to one that can be driven directly from an 18650 cell, or you make a buck converter yourself that is capable of doing that much current. The problem is you can't get this kind of a buck converter uh, with so much current because we are really limited in space. Now when I get the motor inside of here with this assembly on the back, okay, so this in, okay, this is the motor. Then we have an 18650 cell. Then we have the problem that we have to have a BMS in place. Uh, one of the ones that I bought, and I can show you that in a moment, will fit in over here. But this over here, this is a charging, okay? So we have to have the port outside, so you would have to install it like this. But let's say we are just using a standard BMS. We could move the cell like this 
get the BMS over here and just a charging port over here. But then still we only have this much space left. And one of the small ones, if you get them in here, you have still a bit of space to the top, but not much more to the front or to the back, just a tiny amount. So making one yourself is likely to be the best thing you could do. Basically, converting one of these old screwdrivers is not easy. The motors, if they use more or less voltage than what an 18650 can deliver, you run into the problem that you need either a boost or a buck converter. And when you do need one, you can't get them that tiny that can deliver so much current. You can make them yourself, but it's not easy. If you don't go that way, you have to replace the motor and get one with the right uh, in this case, these two pins have to have the same distance, the overall diameter have to, has to be the same. And yeah, okay, so I can just replace this one, that's not a big deal. But it's still a big hassle to do, and considering that you can buy these for only 9 euros that are much more powerful and already lithium iron driven, this is just a project if you're interested in it. This is not a project to actually repair and you reuse them. The time and effort that goes into repairing them or converting them to lithium-ion batteries, in my opinion, is not worth it, unless you're interested in this project. And just before I end this video, here is, I think, let's see, yeah, that's one of the BMSs. It's a 1S BMS and it's good for up to 8 amps. So we can insert it just beside the battery charging port over here or somewhere else and that would be fine. The only thing is, that's also really important, this is a BMS but it needs the exact charging voltage for the cell. This one is a, char is a BMS with a charging circuit so you give in 5 volts, it regulates it down to the cell voltage, but this one you have to supply the exact voltage, so this is also a difference that you have to keep in mind. So I hope you liked this small video and hopefully I was helpful to everyone who tries to repair or convert one of these to lithium ion cells. Thank you for your comment dear if not and I hope you liked this video and it was helpful also to you. Other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!